Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Breeding to Win. Well, the rain has certainly played havoc this past week with our local racing. So hopefully the sun will start shining again. We can get our racing back on track. Time now to take a look at what's on tonight's show. Fee visits Bryn Russell to discuss the Vasco Prida Cup race day and prawn festival. Fee also chats to Michelle Ricks on Harold Crawford racing and Harold's recovery. We feature a Freeman stallion and Horizon Open Day takes place this coming week as well. Il est belle, incroyable ici, la police qui va enlever l'arc de triomphe, cinquième victoire de la course pour Frankie Lettori. It's storming home, one of the last possible gas. What a finish to the Melbourne Cup. The Brave is under pressure when they turn in. It's been a relentless run cut. Who's going to be the last man standing? Everett battling on two. Then wings of eagles. Cliffs of Moa. Wings of eagles swooping though. And wings of eagles get back to win. His 3,000th winner. Vertigon Devon July. Pouting Sensui Samaka. The Vasco Prida Cup and Prawn Festival takes place this coming Saturday at Kenilworth Racecourse. Our Breeding to Win correspondent, Fiona Ramsden, catches up with Bryn Russell, who tells us more about this popular event. The curtain comes down on the Cape summer season on Saturday the 23rd of February at Kenilworth and it's a very exciting day's racing indeed. We've got four features, we've got the listed Kenilworth Cup, we've got the listed Jetmaster Stakes, we've got the Kaya Stables Diadem Stakes and we've got the Grade 3 Pre de Cap which is sponsored by Vasco da Gama and it's lovely to have Bryn Russell on the show this morning. Welcome Bryn. Thank you. It's a very very exciting day's racing on Saturday the 23rd. It's of course the Prawn Festival which is is um, all your thing. You're going to be there with the prawns. You're going to have your big marquee and all the stalls. It's a fantastic day's racing. Yeah, I think I think it is. I think it's a nice way to end the season. I think we're very privileged that they've they've uh, put a couple of other big, if you want to call it the big races, and it's the it's the diadem as well. Um, and hopefully we're going to we're going to get a big turnout. And we have spoken. Uh, the only problems we've had in the past has been the, the, the s slow supply of food and that, but we've spoken to Kenworth and they assure us that people won't be queuing too long this year. Well, it was a fantastic turnout last year, and it's not a bad thing that they, they're queuing for food. And it, it, it was just so, so well done. I mean, there's so many stalls. There's a, you know, a Vida for coffee. There's lots of stalls to do your shopping, and, of course, the prawns. And it was really well attended last year. No, it was, it was fant fantastically attended, and they, have, they, have, they, they did put out a good, dis good display. As you said, there's going to be a lot of stalls, a lot of things for the kids to do. Kids are more than welcome, and we, you know, the more the more the merrier. So I think it's, hopefully it's going to be a good day and good racing. And the Vasco Predicat race itself, you've been sponsoring it now for a while. Yeah, we've. I think we've been doing this for the last four or five years. I think so. So I, I'm not sure whether we have a runner in the race, but hopefully the right horse wins on Saturday. And then you've got your um, partners, Ross and, and Graham's. I'm unfortunately not going to be there, but Ross will be there, and, and you're obviously going to have quite a few friends. It's going to be a very very festive day. I think it's going to be a very festive day. Hopefully it's going to have the, what we call the Vasco vibes. The so people are going to come relax and enjoy. And as you said. Unfortunately, Graham's in Dubai at the moment. He's commentating with the cricket. Uh, Ross will always be there. So, unfortunately, it, the, the two of us will be representing Vasco. Um, and we're going to have a lot of friends and a lot of people coming down. So, you know, the more the merrier. It's been a great uh, summer season for us here in, the, in Cape Town. It's been really, really exciting. And I think, uh, as we said, there's four features on the day. It's going to be a, a really going out with a real bang on that Saturday. Yeah, I think so. I mean, listen, I think we've had, we, we've had some spectacular racing this year. I mean, I think the Met was, was great. I mean, the Queen's Plate was probably one of the strongest fields we've seen in a long time. And hopefully, and hopefully we finish the year off on a good thing. And it, 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 has, been a good, it, it has been a good year in the past. Uh, we've, had a, we've had a good day and, and we're looking forward to a lot of fun. It's a little bit early to tell, but I hope you're going to have some runners on the day. Well, we hope so as well. <laughs> it, would be, it would be nice to have one or two. Hopefully Mr. Stain's going to pull a rabbit out the hat for us like he, he normally does. He's promised on our day that he's going to do something for us, so let's, let's hope. 
Yeah, and no, it's fantastic. And then I also believe that it's free entrance, so um, great for all the public. Get down there and, and have some prawns and some fantastic days racing. 100%. I think that was something that we, we were actually quite emphatic about when we when we were talking to the guys from Kenworth, saying, please, you know, we want, you know, it's difficult enough to get people to come to the races on, on a normal day. So. You know, to 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 put in to, to have an added burden of an entrance fee is to me is a bit crazy. So, we've it, it is free. Kids are welcome. I mean, and, and I think it's going to be a really, really, really good day. And hopefully, we're going to get the turnout. Yeah, it's one of my favourite days racing because it really is a good vibe, good crowd. And, and as you said, get the family there. It's good fun. I think it is. I, I have to say, I, I think it is also one of my favourite days because it's a very, very relaxed vibe on the course. You can come in shorts and t-shirts and slops. So, I think it's going to be good. Day. On another note, how's things going here at Vasco? You've been busy as ever throughout the season. Yeah, no, we've had a fantastic year. I mean, it's it, you know we've been we, we've been very well supported. And again, I want to say we had a hell of a lot of support here during the the sales. Um, it would have been interesting to to tap into some of the conversations that were going on here and what horses were buying and that. But as I say, the horse racing industry really does support us. But uh, it's been a great year. I mean, we 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 we, we had a good just the other weekend when they had this. Uh, comedy carnival at the at the stadium with the, with the, with the rugby. We opened up on a Sunday, and we were full. So yeah, I mean, as far as Vesca goes, we can't complain. Um, unfortunately, uh, I think we we partake a little bit too much in the in the food and the wine ourselves, but it's going well. Well, come the 23rd of February, I hope the people are not sitting in here at Vasco, but they're on the course. No, they're going to be. I mean, I mean, we. I mean, I think I think Ross can Ross can tell you that uh, we. All the locals that are coming here already want to know where their tickets and where their invites are. So I think you're going to have all of Vasco there. And how are things going uh, runners-wise? I mean, Marin Resco ran recently in Dubai. And yeah. He ran a, quite a creditable race, first time out. Yeah, I thought so. I, th I, th I, thought, he, I thought he ran a very good race. I mean, it was a 1400, which is which is far too sh too too short for him. I mean, uh, he did he did win the drill hall, which is 1400. But I think. You know, when you go there and you're racing for $150,000, the, the horses there are, are, are proper, proper. But we're actually going across on the 9th, or well, we're going to leave on the 6th, we're going to go to watch him, he's running on Super Saturday. And let's hope he gets, hope he does well enough to qualify for the for the, for the World Cup, and I think that's the 30th of March. Yeah, it's exciting stuff. And of course, your sponsor, jockey Bernard Fade, Herb, rode him on, on his first outing, yeah. and he's going again to ride him. Yes, he, he is. Um, and, and I think if you look at Bernie at the moment, he's, he's, he's having a, a purple patch. I mean, he's, he's riding, he's, he's riding brilliantly. I mean, Bernie, when he's on form, is brilliant. But when Bernie wants to be Bernie and do crazy things, he could also do that. But we love him very much, and he's got a, he's had a, you know, from my start in the horse racing. I mean, obviously with Water Winter, he was Water Winter's jockey, and he's come through. So he's been, he's been very, very good to us. And I, you know, he's, he, he's never. I know one thing with Bernie on the horse, he's going to give 150 percent. Yeah, he's a good strong rider and a, and a good person too. And on the horse front here, have you got lots of uh, youngsters to look forward to? We've got a whole lot of uh, young, young, young guns coming through. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully we're going. To, excuse me. Hopefully we're going to find another little Marinaresco or Magical Wonderland. Um, you know. So we, we're hoping. There's one or two that, that that have got potential, but you know this game better than I do. You know, just when you think you've got a, you've got something special. You never know. Yeah, absolutely. But you know, you've had some real highs, oh, and, sure. and and those horses obviously they sort of move on, and then you have to wait for the for the next batch. I'm, I'm sure you'll get there again. No, we will do. And and, and as I says, listen, we we we've got to just say thank you, thank you, thank you. I mean to. To have had a horse like Water Winter and a horse like Marina Resca, to have won the July the way Marina Resca did, and now to be to be blessed to have a horse uh, running overseas, and it's it's it's, yeah, it's it's kind of like a dream come true, you know. And I think the most important thing for Marina, Marina Resca is that he, he really is sound and happy at the moment. I think Mike's doing Mike DeCox doing, and his team are doing a hell of a job with him, and maybe and maybe he can he can he can, he can earn a bob or two for us. It would it would be nice to earn a couple of dollars. Well, win or lose, it's a it's a fun experience for you. 100%. I think the most important thing, win or lose, you know, we, we, we're in the game, it's, we, we're lucky to be there, and uh, as long as the horse is well looked after and taken care of, then we're happy. And apart from the, the Vasco Prida Cup happening on Saturday, the 23rd, the race course, what else have we got to look forward to at Vasco? Have there other sporting events coming up? Oh, well, we've got the Six Nations that are going on now. I think you must be smiling with England giving everyone a hiding. They, they gave the Irish and they beat the Irish and they had the French hiding, so we've got, we've got that happening. And then we get into the rugby season, and it's going to be uh, the Super 15 and then the schoolway rugby. So, we, we, you know, it's just, the, the sports just keep running. I mean, it's difficult to believe we're already halfway through February. Kids on school in four, on school holidays in four weeks' time. So I mean, this year is moving. Yeah, it's never a dull moment here at Vasco either. Not only with sporting events. I mean, everyone comes here for a lunch, a birthday party. I see all the functions happening on Facebook here at Vasco. Okay, well, fortunately, I don't. I'm not on Facebook because I don't know how, how that works. But yes, now look again. Uh, uh, yeah, I think we've got the right formula here. We try and do the best that we can. I mean, we 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 we. 
we, we want a, a happy environment where people come and enjoy and, and, and get value for money. And I, and I think I think I think we do do it. I think the only problem is probably the owners enjoy it a little bit too much themselves. Well, Brent, thanks very much for, for chatting to us this morning. Looking forward to seeing you at the Prawn Festival on the 23rd. What would we do without sponsors like yourselves? Fiona, thank you very much. And also to you, thank you for your support because, I mean, you give us a lot of support. Thank you to Grant and to the team and everyone for everything they do for us because if it wouldn't for you, you wouldn't, we wouldn't be on the map. Well, thank so you. thank you. Thank you very much. Make sure you have enough prawns. On no, we will, we will do. <laughs> thank you. It's always lovely to chat to Bryn Russell at the Cape Town Prawn Festival on the 23rd of February at Kenilworth Racecourse. It's going to be a really exciting day as I said there's four features get yourself to Kenilworth Racecourse it's free entrance and lots of Vasco da Gama prawns to be eaten Six-year-old Cape Townian trainer Harold Crawford suffered a stroke last month. The owner chats to his daughter Michelle Ricks about his recovery. Harold Crawford has been training for many years and he is a friendly and familiar face in the racing industry and it was a shock when we heard of him having a very nasty stroke about a month ago. His daughter Michelle Ricks, who's been assistant for many years, is with us this morning to give us an update on Harold's progress. Michelle, always lovely to have you on the show. Thank you, Fee. How is your dad doing? Definitely on the mend. Um, he's left hospital and he, he'll do a six week stint in, in rehab and probably doing more exercise now than what he's done in the last 30 years. And with your dad now in recovery, I, I guess you've got to do the entries, the paperwork, everything. That's it. You know, I've always taken a role of, of doing admin as well, but you know what? It's, it's a good learning experience and, um, you know, it, it's something that I welcome with open arms and it's an industry I love. And, um, you know, you can only embrace a bad situation like this and, and just try and make the best out of it. This, the yard is his life and um, we took it for granted just how much he actually does. Yeah, we've all had to rally around the yard and, and, and you know, all fill in and do the jobs that he would normally do on his own. And um, yeah, I'm just, I'm grateful that I can step in his shoes. Um, there are big shoes to fill. Um, what I've still got to learn, he's forgotten, but um, we're managing pretty good. Vosky, of course, has gone to Mauritius now, but um, you've got other upcoming stars. You know, Ready, Steady, Go is a decent horse. Yes, he's a lovely horse. If we can sort out his mind issues, he'd probably be a little bit better. But um, yes, he's the oldest horse in our yard at the moment, so it's always nice to have the three-year-olds and the two-year-olds coming up. So we're looking forward to having them grace the race course. And you possibly might go to Durham with him? Probably. We, you know, we'll all see how it goes with, with his temperament and, um, you know, Summerfelt is a is a horse heaven, so I'm sure if he can manage her, he'll manage even better there. Yeah, it's certainly fantastic facilities, and I know you had a lovely time and had a good experience there last year. Yes, I was very well looked after, and um, certainly miss all my, my Durban family, as I call them. And how many horses have you got in training here at Melnerton? At the moment, we're full. We, we've got 30 horses, and obviously the next step would be to try and get some more boxes, as we've still got babies on the farm that need to come in. And um, yeah, so we, we, couldn't be, we couldn't be happier with, with the situation. When, when things are tough in this industry. So we're very grateful, especially being a small yard. And it's a very hands-on family business. I mean, your, your mum's here helping you this morning and your brother, you all sort of play a role. Yes, my brother's, um, he's very clear up when it comes to the handicapping and, and tends to keep his, his finger on that pulse. And my mum, she's just, she's the one that holds everything together. And she's always, she's a, been a horsewoman all her life as well. So it always does help to have an extra set of eyes and hands. I'm sure your father's missing the horses do you give him a sort of daily update when you go and visit well he's um he's still quite hands-on from his recovery bed and making sure that all the horses are nominated in the right races and telling me if i'm not doing anything correct and um, so in that regard he's still very hands-on and very sharp and um, hopefully he'll come to races on the 23rd he is feeling a lot better to do that and um yeah we'll have two runners in the feature races so he'll make sure that he's there to 
that to make sure that I'm doing my job correctly. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> it's going to be great to see him. Of course, it's our, our last meet, big meeting for the season, and it's great to hear you've got runners. Uh, what's running on the big day? Ready, steady, go. We'll run in the Jetmaster Stakes, which we won with Porovsky last year, and we will run Old Data in the, in the Kenilworth Cup. Yeah, that's exciting stuff. And you've got some loyal owners, haven't you? I've seen you with some, some lovely owners on track that are, have stuck with you for, for many years. Yes, I must say, um, uh, the majority of our owners have been very good through through this time and um, you know I simply have to thank them for their loyalty and for, for trusting me and looking after their horses. And fantastic staff. I mean I know they're, they're a very caring bunch and I think actually was one of your members of staff who, who was uh, working when your father had the, the terrible stroke. Yes, um, our head groom Alvis. I've, I've worked with him for 17 years now and brought him over when I came to my father and um, we work very closely together and Without him, the yard wouldn't function as, as well as it does, and um, my dad probably wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for him either. But one day, the plan is obviously for you to take over. Is that your, your, your uh, ambition? Ideally, that's what I'd like to do, and obviously with my husband's support because he manages everything at home, plus he's business, and he's doing a sterling job at that. But um, it's an industry I've been in my whole life, and an industry that I'd want to carry on doing. So, um, yeah. Well, Michelle, thank you very much for taking the time this morning to chat to you. It's always lovely to have you on the show. We wish your dad a speedy recovery. Can't wait to see him on the course on the 23rd. And best of luck with your string here and in Durban. Oh, thank you so much, Bea. It's always lovely to have Michelle on the show. Of course, the Crawford family are very hands-on here at Milnerton, a smashing family, and we wish them all the best. son of her Aces dream and sire of grade one performers, including 2018 leading three-year-old Mungs Hood, stands at Main Chance Farms and is managed by John Freeman. Karari himself, who's by Oasis Dream, uh, was a Group 1 winner himself over a mile and a quarter and had very good form over a mile as well. And uh, he's gone down to South Africa and, you know, with the best will in the world, you wouldn't say South Africa's got the strongest mare population in the world. And he has very successfully moved up a lot of those mares. That's what we found. And in fact, Silvano has very much done the same. And we have one table that we run of stallions, sires that move their mares up. And of the active sires in South Africa, Karari and Silvano are one, two on that list. And when you flip it around and do the combined sire plus mare points that we do, Silvano is number one and Karari number two of the active sires in South Africa. So and this horse um, covered relatively ordinary mare. Yeah, uh, very definitely. <laughs> so obviously with better mares, you can imagine he's going to have a more significant impact. Yes, absolutely. Uh, no doubt as he gets better and better mares and particularly uh, the possibility of crossing Silvano mares onto Carrari, which I'm sure Dr. Jacobs has uh, has been thinking about and is probably doing quite a bit of that has uh, that's very appealing because Danzig on Najinsky, which is what Silvano goes back to uh, in his sire line, has always been a really really successful cross. So I think as he gets better mares and as he gets more Silvano mares, uh, it's the 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 future is extremely bright. 
I wouldn't I wouldn't want to bet on any other horse in South Africa becoming champion sire uh, in the next few years. I mean, it's it's got to be Karari and the apex system that we use takes all the runners in a given season or a given year. Uh, everything that runs and we take the top 2% of those runners and those are called A runners in any given season or any given year. So it's obviously quite a high standard and it's determined in this case by earnings rather than by black type. Uh, so uh, that it, it is on that scale that uh, that Karari has has done so well. It's like an average earnings index but it but Apex takes out out the one huge earner and just counts it as one good horse. So uh, you don't get the distortions that you get in the average earnings index. Apex measures the frequency with which a sire is able to get runners that are in the top 2% of earners in whatever jurisdiction we're measuring. Recently retired Grade 3 winner Horizon is currently being syndicated for stud by for Mark Equine. He stands at Himmel and Ada and they'll be having an open day this coming Friday the 22nd of February. Horizon is out in front, he shows his class and Horizon goes on to win it. That's a wrap for this week's edition of Breeding to Win. Don't forget to join us for more Breeding to Win action next week. 
From Grant Knowles, Fiona Ramsden and myself, Julie Alexander, and the rest of the Breeding to Win team, good night.